Welcome back and thanks for staying with the SABC News Channel. Now, the ANC has accused members of the IFP of attacking their supporters during the 110th commemoration of King Dinuzulu Gajayo in Guaykeza. That's just outside Ulundi in KwaZulu Natal. 11 ANC supporters suffered injuries, we're told, and received treatment from Guaykeza Hospital, with one person admitted due to uh, the severity of their injuries. This incident, once again, heightening tensions between the two political parties and raising concerns about the escalation of political violence in that region. Let's continue with our reaction to the story. Bring in now KZN Sanko's Provincial Secretary, Sizu Ekele, who joins us via our video link. Great to have you on the program, sir. Thanks always for making time to speak to us. The tensions around, or I should say, the political tensions in KwaZulu Natal are well documented. We all know of the very dark history that that province has when it comes to, let's call it, political intolerance. How worried are you as Sanko that we're starting to see the early signs of that creeping in, especially given the election year we have ahead? Good morning, Ayanda, and good morning to your viewers. Of course, as Sanko in KwaZulu Natal, we are highly perturbed by this violence, which we have witnessed uh, during the weekend. Of course, it shows the uh, highest levels of uh, political tolerance. And we believe that it was unnecessary. It should not have happened. And why calling for calm in the province of KwaZulu This violence has undermined such a very important uh, historical event, which was very successful, the commemoration uh, of King Kizulu Gatajwai. So we are calling for law enforcement agencies to play their role in terms of ensuring that the perpetrators of this unwarranted violence are put behind bars. And uh, we are calling for those who are victims as well. We are calling for the ANC particularly because it is the ANC members who, who, who were attacked. So we are calling uh, on the leadership of the ANC not to retaliate. And we are calling on the leadership of the IAP to take accountability for this sordid act and apologize to the people of KwaZulu Natal. Yeah. Because we do not want you to see the reoccurrence of what we witnessed pre-1994. Absolutely. And depending who you ask, all of the tension started bubbling over after that incident um, on stage between Sboni Soduma and the traditional prime minister of the Amazulu people. And, uh, you know, the optics around Tulasiza Butelezi being part of the IFP, I suppose, doesn't help. But there are real questions about, for example, restraint and not acting impulsively, even at a leadership level, when there are deep disagreements. Yes. I, you see, there is no act we should warrant uh, violence. There is no act which warrant that innocent people uh, who respected uh, the call uh, of government to go commemorate uh, uh, the history of their leadership to be attacked. And we can say for certain that uh, this, this is a reaction based on the uh, altercation between uh, Congressman Sotuma and Mr. Tulasi Tulis. We have received a report from other circles which say the ANC, the IFP got agitated much earlier on when they realized that uh, in their stronghold, which is Kwanongoma, they were outnumbered by the ANC members. So the ANC, IFP felt that their ego was bruised much earlier. So from other, uh, from those reports, uh, we believe that uh, the IFP had a plan much earlier to instigate this kind of violence. So that uh, altercation that we saw uh, on, the, on, the, on the stage has no correlation with the violence that actually took place. So that is our view to say the ISP felt that their e political ego was proved by being outnumbered in their stronghold. And that, of course, should not uh, end up uh, uh, causing violence. If what you're saying is true, how do we then explain the fact that it seemingly IFP members who were injured? 
we, are, we have not received, of course, reports that uh, IFP uh, members were also injured in the process. The report that we received are ANC members who are injured. Part of right. those ANC members, they are SANCO members. That's why we have uh, this particular report, because SANCO members were also there in their great numbers. And uh, a number of them was also uh, injured during that trial. Right, I beg your pardon. It's actually, yeah, you're right. It's, it's ANC supporters who we're told were injured, according to some of those reports. Um, but, you know, it's interesting that you're not making any kind of connection between what took place on stage, because some people are seeing that as, again, the, the culmination of, of the frustration that was taking place on the ground. I mean, Swani Soduma has already spoken in some instances about his own rationale. And from what I've been able to see from that, he's doubling down on going ahead and grabbing the mic, which is against the etiquette, we're told, in any event, no less an apolitical one, where there's a president who is present and a sitting king on that same stage. Yes, uh, Mr. Uh, Ayanda, you know, in any conflict management, when we wanted to resolve a conflict, you always have to uh, check who is the instigator who instigates that con who instigated that conflict? Of course, it is a uh, Mr. Tula Sindremuteli who instigated this whole thing. So he must take accountability uh, for his actions because he needs to grow in his uh, new responsibility as the traditional prime minister of the Zulus and understand to manage the distinction between his uh, role as the leader of the Zulus and his role of the IFP leader. Because if he continues to confuse all of these roles, he will then pose a big problem for the people of KwaZulu Natal, particularly the royal house. He needs to understand that the role of being a traditional prime a minister of the Zulus is a role that we respect all of us. He cannot reduce it to a level of a political part that he belongs to. Because that's what he did on stage. He became reckless and he, his act is abhorrent and very much irresponsible. In the presence of the king of the Zulus, uh, uh, Isilo, Mrs. Zulu, Kazuelti, he then it degenerates to a level of an IFP leader where his simple responsibility was to introduce uh, the, the, the king of the Zulus. So he needs to take blame for any reaction that might have ensued after he had degenerated to a level of an IFP leader instead of being a, 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 a traditional prime minister of the Zulus. So, right. However, we still maintain that at the beginning, before this incident took place, we were already getting reports that the IFP is agitated by seeing a number of ANC leaders or members who were in that particular event. All right. So they were outnumbered. So, yes. Let me ask this question then. Are you saying that Sbonis Duma was justified in what he did? Let me uh, ask you uh, in a way, answer your question by asking you a question. If in this particular interview, uh, I begin to chastise you and say, what are you going to do? Are you going to let me to finish chastising you and fail it, or you will switch off the microphone and even immediately terminate this interview? So, and you will be justified in doing so because I'm well, definitely let, let, me, let me guarantee you. So, uh, so let me guarantee you one thing, uh, Mr. Kele, I am unlikely to cut you off because I disagree with you, even if you are hurling insults at me. I mean, the greater responsibility is for the viewer to be able to make up their mind about how our interaction goes. So uh, I'm really trying to get to the bottom of what principle you reckon should have been prioritized at that time. A leadership that is seen to be able to control its impulses or acting in a way that may very well fuel or fan the flames that you've already admitted had already been started because of the tensions that existed between IFP and ANC supporters? Uh, 
I think you, you must listen to a, a particular interview which was uh, uh, done by Professor Musa Tulu yesterday uh, reacting to this particular incident. He informed us that uh, throughout the week, uh, Mr. Tulasizu Pelezi on social media has been going on about how he will embarrass and reprimand a comrade Pei Tolo in this particular event. So people were already aware that he's going to go there and, 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 and go beyond his mandate and go uh, and become a belligerent as he was and then begin to attack an ANC leader. Begim Tolo is an ANC leader. He's not a government employee. You can't attack an ANC leader on a, like on a government platform. I think a, a comrade Spooni Soduma was justified to defend the image of the ANC uh, before the ISP leader could finish attacking the ANC. Because if you attack a provincial secretary, you are attacking the heart of the organization. So what a ISP leader in the form of Mr. Telezi did there was to try to score cheap political scores uh, at the expense of the government program in the presence of uh, his CEO and in the presence of the president of the country. I think he needs to take a full responsibility for such abhorrent acts. So, therefore, we conclude that Spodi uh, Sotoma uh, did a right thing to protect the image of the organization before it could be humiliated at the hands of uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Mutelis because he had planned for it throughout the week. And where do we draw the line then, Mr. Gale? Where, where, when does you know it become um, unacceptable to, I suppose, conduct your way in a, in a in a sense where it's deemed you have dropped etiquette, right? Because um, I mean, there's that ancient old saying about an alpha and eye turning us all blind, right? So it's it's one thing to speak about what uh, Mr. Butelezi did, but surely there are also standards and expectations for someone who occupies a role as important as Boniso Dumas when it comes to how he responds to that, especially when, as was the case this past weekend, all eyes are on him. I'm actually perturbed by the direction uh, almost all the interviews seem to be taking. They are all worried about the reaction uh, to, to the situation that uh, Mr. Mutele has caused. So no one seems to be too concerned about the instigator of that uh, particular incident. So I think if anyone will attack any organization that I lead, I will not wait for the person to finish attacking because it seems like people are complaining to say, ah, Mr. Teles was supposed to be given a, a platform to complete his attack against the ANC. I think that's a wrong stance, that's a wrong approach, that's a wrong perspective. And we should be talking about the instigator and being warning the instigator to say, as he will continue to be a traditional prime minister of the Zulus, he needs to have a clear distinction between that role and his role as the IFP leader. So I, I, I think that's what needs to be done. Otherwise, we will not be, we will not continue to experience uh, what we experience uh, or during the weekend. Let me ask the question this way. Could Sboni Duma have responded differently and still having it made his point that in fact the gathering should remain apolitical. In other words, was this the only way of driving that point across? You, you see what happened is uh, Sponiso responded immediately. Uh, what we wanted to achieve if same thing I would want to achieve if I would be if I were to be in these positions. I would want you to stop the one who's attacking from attacking. The only way to do that is to switch off his, switch off his mic, if you have capacity to do so, or to take the mic away from him. I think uh, given this, the period at which 
Uh, we are in as a country. Uh, we are heading for the elections on the 29th of May. So, of course, uh, the first thing you have to do, we want to do, is to stop your organization from being unfairly attacked by the opposition. So, I still believe that uh, what Smolenso Doma did was justified, uh, given that he had to act uh, immediately as the attack was taking place. Sure. I can imagine a lot of people perhaps seeing things differently, but that's the time we have. Thanks for engaging us. The KZN Sanko Provincial Secretary, it's Sizwe Kele. And yeah, I imagine there's going to be a whole lot of reaction to that. I mean, was there no other way of making the point is the question? And Sanko's answer is no.